I have just received the latest reports from the battlefield, and things are grim. The walls of Neverwinter have been breached, and the Lord's Alliance has retreated to Castle Never under the onslaught. Erebeth, with her intimate knowledge of our strategies, crushes our forces in every encounter. Half the city is under the control of her Luskan forces. And what of your mission? Have you found the success our troops have not? Finally, some good news. And not a moment too soon. Even now, I am preparing to leave for Castle Neverwinter, to help ensure the words I sent there for safekeeping are not captured by Arabeth. I might as well open my coffers to you before we go. The money was meant to fund the defense of the city, and you seem to have done more for that cause than anyone else. Better I give the funds to you than let the Luskan forces loot them. Whatever awaits us, I just want to tell you that I have been proud to serve at your side. I have 5,000 gold pieces here. Take it. You have truly earned it. And there is more where that came from. If you accompany me to Neverwinter to aid in defending the city. The Lord's Alliance desperately needs someone such as you. All our weapons and armor have been sent to the battlefronts, unfortunately. The only thing I have left are these potions. I was going to give them to my most trusted operatives to use in their efforts to defend Neverwinter. Now that I think about it, however, you could probably make better use of them. Time grows short. We must return to Castle Never to defend its walls and the words of power within from Arabeth and Malcolm. We will leave right now if you are ready. I only hope we are not too late. The words of power. The tools of a creator race. Hadrilene spoke of them as though they could shape worlds, and perhaps they had. With these in hand, victory would not be far behind, or so it was thought. While Erengand searched for the ancient relics, Morgrim's army pressed their attacks against Neverwinter. Their dark magics and sheer numbers soon overwhelmed the defenders. The betrayer, Erebeth, was at the forefront when the walls were breached. The words of power, once thought safe within Castle Never, were in danger of falling to the enemy. And behind the invasion, an even greater evil, Morag, Queen of the Old Ones had awoken. You must speak with Lord Nasher first. Once you have spoken with him, you may return and speak to me. Hey there, dear. What can I do for you? We meet again. As you know, I am Nasha Alagonda, Lord of Neverwinter. I was once an adventurer like you, though that was long ago. Erin Gend tells me you have done much in the defense of our city. For this I thank you, though I fear it was all in vain. Erebeth knows our defenses too well. We could not stand against her forces. The enemy has breached our walls. Is lost. Do not give up hope, my lord. We still have the words of power, after all. And what good has that done, Eren? We have no way to use them. Whatever magic is locked within those stone tablets is of no use to us. Perhaps Hadrilene will reveal their secret to us, if you release her from the dungeons. I don't trust that creature, Eren, and neither should you. We have done her no harm. If she was truly our ally, she would tell us what she knows. Adrilene told us about the secret door beneath Castle Never. Without her, we would never have found the Source Stone. And what good has that done, Eren? That creature won't tell us anything about it. The Source Stone is as useless to us as the words of power. Perhaps Hadrilene will speak to our champion. She has spoken with them before. Enough, Eren. Now. If you want to speak to Hadrilene, you are free to do so. 
But I will not release her from the dungeon while an enemy is within our city gates. Personally, I think this is all a waste of time. Words of power, the Source Stone, Hadraline. What good is this against Erebeth's army? Our fate is sealed. We are all doomed. After all you have done for the city, the least I can do is answer your questions. Although Gend probably knows more than I do. We captured the Lizard Woman slinking around the city shortly after Luskan attacked. After Erebeth's betrayal, I'm not too trusting. So we are keeping her locked in a cell in the dungeon. She was hissing and babbling about Mogrim wanting the words of power and the Source Stone. But we couldn't get much else out of her. She's half mad, I fear, and doesn't seem to trust us. Gend seems to think she might trust you, though. You'll f She's locked away in the castle dungeon. Just head south and down the stairs. I'm sorry, but I won't do that. Not while there's an enemy inside the city. She might be an ally, but it's just as likely she's a spy. Besides, we aren't doing her any harm, only keeping an eye on her. And if she has information to help us, she should be willing to share it whether we keep her in prison or not. Gend can probably answer your questions better than I. But I've given them to Master Ford, chief archaeologist of Neverwinter. He seems to think there's some link between the words and the Source Stone. Initially, I hoped he could figure out how to unleash their power. But even as wise as Master Ford is, he hasn't been able to learn anything more about the words of power or the Source Stone. Since we discovered the Source Stone in the secret chambers beneath Castle Never, Master Ford has spent all his time studying it. You can go speak to him to see what he's discovered if you wish, though you might have more luck getting information from that creature Hadrian if you can get her to talk. Gend can probably answer your questions better than I, but I'll help you if I can. The reports are grim. In the initial assault, Luskan overwhelmed us with sheer numbers and the unbridled ferocity of their attack. The defenders were forced to fall back to the city core. Erebeth knew our defenses too well, never stood a chance. My troops are loyal, but against such odds, there's little hope. It's only a matter of time until Castle Never itself falls. It is too late for that, I fear. Our defenses are already broken. The damage has been done. If Erebeth and Mogram were both slain, there is a chance it might break the spirits of the Luskan invaders. But I wouldn't count on it. The Luskans attacked with a rage and ferocity I have never seen before. Some sinister force drives our enemies forward. Or perhaps this is justice of a sort. Neverwinter may have brought this doom upon itself. The blood of Fenthic is on my hands. After the plague, the mob cried for blood, and I gave it to them. Fenthic was guilty only of trusting Dester. He was no enemy of Neverwinter. And yet I saw him hanged for failing to protect the city, as was his sworn duty. Can we really be so surprised Erebeth betrayed us after we executed her lover? That is what I tell myself over and over, but the words are hollow to my own ears. I only wanted to do what was best for Neverwinter, to heal the wounds left by the Wailing Death. Yet even as I passed sentence on Fenthic, I knew in my heart it was wrong. This was not justice. Fenthic died to feed the city's lust for revenge. And now Neverwinter shall fall to an army that was raised to feed Erebeth's own vengeance. I fear it is too late for that. Fenthic is dead and Erebeth... Perhaps if I were given the chance to pass judgment again, I would act differently, more mercifully. But I fear that chance shall never come. I must live with the burden of what I have done, as must my city. Neverwinter will fall. Gend can probably answer your questions better than I. But I'll help you if I can. When we first captured Hadraline, she said something about the Source Stone and secret chambers beneath Castle Never. She sounded half crazy, but I thought it was worth looking into. I put Master Ford, Neverwinter's leading archaeological expert, in charge of research. He unearthed the previously undiscovered chamber beneath the castle. Inside was an enormous crystalline boulder, the Source Stone. If you want to know more about it, you should speak with Master Ford. Gend can probably answer your questions better than I. Once, I was an adventurer like you. 
were the situation not so desperate, I would call upon the court bards to sing you tales of my exploits. But I am long since retired. I am ruler of Neverwinter now, and my life is one of administrative duties and the delegation of responsibility. Hardly the stirring stuff of legends. I miss those days of glory and heroism, but I gave them up to serve the city I love. Alas, my sacrifice was all in vain. Never winter will fall, and I can do nothing about it. Of course, of course. But before you go, maybe Gend is right. Maybe you should go speak to this Hadrilene creature. I doubt it will do much good, but maybe, just maybe, she knows something that can save us. We're desperate, after all. Any important information you come across should be reported directly to Eren Gend. I've placed him in charge of the defense of the city. These are indeed dark times, though not so dark as Lord Nasher portrays them. The people of Neverwinter are made of sterner stuff than any of us imagine. But if Neverwinter is to survive, we must all play our part. My place is here by Lord Nash's side. I must oversee every aspect of the defense of the city. And your own part is one you know all too well. You must save Neverwinter once more. Though how you might accomplish this, I cannot say. Perhaps the creature Hadrilene knows something of this. I once knew every secret in this city. But these are turbulent times, and even I am left stumbling in the dark. Yet it pains me to talk of her. There was a time when I considered her a champion of Neverwinter. And I called her friend. Her betrayal struck us all hard, especially Lord Nasher. He will not admit it, but I imagine the situation was made even worse by the guilt he felt over Fenwick's execution. I make no excuses for Arabeth's actions. But seeing the cheering crowds at her lover's execution might very well be what turned her against the city. But now is not the time to discuss whether Erebeth's actions were justified. We must stay focused on finding a way to save the city. I'll do my best to help you. She arrived here shortly after the third word of power was delivered to Castle Never. Lord Nasher suspected she was a spy and had her imprisoned in the dungeons. After Erebeth's betrayal, he has grown overly cautious, and I fear it has made Hadrilene mistrustful of us. She did tell us about the source stone beneath the castle, but nothing beyond that. Maybe you could try speaking to her. She trusts you. Lord Nasher would never consent to that, I'm afraid. Not while we are besieged by a hostile army. I doubt it would help in any case. She does not trust us, plain and simple. Perhaps because of Arabeth's actions, Hadrilene fears everyone from Neverwinter is corruptible. She's locked away in the castle dungeon. Just head south and down the stairs. I'll do my best to help you. Lord Nasher gave them to Master Ford, chief archaeologist. But Master Ford has not been able to learn anything more about the words of power or the source. Ever you can speak to him yourself if you want to know more. I'll do my best to help you. Things have calmed since the initial onslaught. The defenders fell back to the city core, but I do not know how long we will be able to hold it. We are badly outnumbered, and Arabeth knew every inch of this city. All her knowledge is being used against us now. Reinforcements from the Lord's Alliance are on their way, but I do not know if we can hold out until they get here. I doubt it would help. Erebeth has likely shared our every weakness with all her generals by now. If Mugra were killed, might break the enemy's spirit. Though in truth that also seems unlikely. Normally Luskin forces are but cowards and raiders. They hit and run. This time, however, something is different. Some sinister force drives our enemies forward. And there is a pall lingering in the air. A dark cloud hanging over all the defenders and driving them to despair. Surely you must feel it. There is a shadow over Neverwinter, a curse that drags down morale and inspires our enemy. Perhaps on some level, the people of Neverwinter feel they deserve to suffer. I know Lord Nasher feels such guilt, at least, for what happened to Fenthic. 
It's one thing to say the law is always right. But there are exceptions to every rule. Fenthic's execution was legal. But even while he was pronouncing sentence, I suspect, Lord Nasher knew justice was not being served. Fenthic's death was born of anger and vengeance. Plain and simple. The same motives behind Erebeth's betrayal. Lord, for all our sakes, I hope he is given that chance. Is there something else I might do for you? You should speak to Hadrilin before you go. Maybe she will tell you something about the Source Stone or the words of power. My instincts tell me that she is the key if Neverwinter is to be saved. And I have learned to trust my instincts. Dear, I'm getting to it. <laughs> I have been waiting for you. These other warm bloods are weak. I do not trust them. They are weak. Like the ones you call Arabeth and Morgrim. They cannot stand against the creators. Now that Morag stirs within the Source Stone, Morgrim has unlocked the magic of the words of power. <laughs> the old ones awake, and the world you know shall be no more. Three of the words are here in this castle. But there are four words of power in all. Morgrim has found the final word strongest of them all. I came here to warn your people against Morag's return, but the warm bloods do not trust me. They cast me into this dungeon. Do not waste time trying to free me from this prison. It serves no purpose. Instead, you must help me stop Morag's return before the Old Ones awake and I am made a word slave once more. The fourth word is close. I can feel its power. <coughs> Morgrim and Arabeth brought it here to this city you call Neverwinter. Bring the word to me. 
I am Hadralene, leader of the word slaves. With the final word, I can break Morak's power and trap her forever inside the Source Stone. Your kind are ever curious. A curse of your warm blood, perhaps. Morgrim is nothing but a foolish pawn. Morag twists and warps his mind. And in the end, she will destroy him. My queen has promised him power. But when the old ones awake, he will be enslaved with the rest of the lesser races. Your kind are ever cute. The one you call Arabin has fallen under Morag's spell. Some terrible fate left her vulnerable to Morag's corrupting evil. My queen touched her mind through her dreams, feeding a dark and festering hatred until it consumed all else. Arabith is a slave to Morag's evil now. Your kind are ever curious. I am Hadralene, handmaiden of Morag and last of the word slaves. When my people vanished, my kind were left behind. But forced to survive the endless, we scattered the words of power. Your kind are ever curious. A curse of your warm blood, perhaps. You must trust me. If not, Morag will awaken the old ones, and Neverwinter will be destroyed. You must hurry. With each passing hour, Morag's power grows. Soon, I will not be strong enough to stop my queen from awakening her people. Takasi! <coughs> Excuse my Elvin. All done here. All right, dear. I'm getting to it. All done here. Dear, I'm getting to it. <laughs> all right, dear, I'm getting to it. I'm all done here. I'm all done here. I'm all done here. I'm all done here. All right, dear. Takasi! Oh, excuse my Elvin. <laughs> all done here. Well met. Hello there.
Greetings, I am Master Ford, head archaeologist of Neverwinter. Lord Nasher mentioned someone might be coming to investigate the Source Stone. Organizing our remaining troops to withstand the next Luskan assault requires all my attention. If the enemy breaches the city core, we are lost. I am afraid I can only spare a few moments for you, though I will try to help you however I can. Hadrilene does not trust us, I fear. Understandable, considering the reception she received upon her arrival. You are the only one she is willing to speak to. Perhaps it would be best if you kept her secrets. If she wishes to share them with us, she will send for either Lord Nasher or myself. I am more than just a spy master now. I am responsible for coordinating the entire defense of Neverwinter. I will not risk alienating a potential ally in Hadrilene. I trust you, and I suspect that whatever information Hadrilene has shared is something I cannot help you with in any case. If we had the manpower, I would place an entire company at your disposal. But I need every warm body on the battle lines just to keep Luskin from taking the city core. You will have to act on Hadrilene's information on your own, I'm afraid. Is there anything else I can help you with? Yes, there is still much that must be done if Neverwinter is to be saved. of healing. Though I fear it has become naught but a morgue, there are more dead and dying here than I could cure in a lifetime. Blessings of Earth Mother Shantia. Thank you. 
Hey there, dear. What can I do? Dear, I'm getting to you. I'm all done here.
Point, friend. I can do that. Sorry. Ah! <laughs> 
I greet you. Good tidings to you. Well met. Hello. Greetings. Welcome to you. These are strange times. The beds in the Moonstone Mosque being filled by wounded soldiers. Please, I beg of you, help my sister. Lisa's just a little girl. Hello. 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 I can still feel my...
My steel will strike true. When I look at all the wounded, I can't help but curse those Luskin dogs for what they've done. Thank you. Thank you for bringing me back, my little Lisa. You have come to the Cloak Tower in dark times, friend. The others of my guild have left to lend their spells to the battle, and I've heard nothing of them since.
Well met. Hello. I don't think I can do that. Sorry.
I see Morag was right. Arabeth was not strong enough to defeat you, but she has served her purpose. <laughs> you have come too late! The ritual is over! The awakening of the Old Ones has begun! <laughs> the Creator race will be reborn! And you shall be the first to taste the power my queen has given unto me! Beyond Tetra, you will regret that! Ugh! <sighs> 